what advice do you have for someone who wants to start embroidery? How can I get better at embroidery without being scared to mess up my machine? What's the best machine from your company for sewing? What's going on you guys? This is Henry again from Ricoma. Every now and then we ask our Instagram followers to submit questions they might have about the custom apparel industry. So on today's episode, we're going to continue our segment of Ask Henry, where I'll be answering some of the most recent questions we've received to help you navigate the world of custom apparel. Before we get into today's questions, if you're new to the channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you keep up to date as soon as new videos are released. And if you enjoy content just like this, make sure to smash that like button and give this video a thumbs up as it greatly helps out this channel. All right, so jumping into our first question, which asks, what advice do you have for someone who wants to start embroidery? Now, obviously with the demand of embroidery at an all time high, it's never been a better time to start in this business. My first piece of advice would be to define your goals since starting in embroidery would look very very different for different people. Perhaps ask yourself some questions to help you decide which route to go with. Are you just a crafter who is interested in embroidery and doing it for a hobby? Or perhaps you're a small entrepreneur who's operating their first embroidery business out of their home or garage. Are you planning to do this on a part-time or a full-time basis? Or are you someone who's already experienced in the apparel decoration industry but just want to expand into embroidery? These are just some simple questions that can help guide you into the right direction to pick the right machine for your business or what type of items you want to embroider in, in either picking a right pricing structure for your business or thinking about the right machine to make an investment into. The next piece of advice that I will give you is once you determine your goals, you need to also determine your target audience or your target customer. Once you determine what kind of customer you want to cater your embroidery services to, you can then start researching what are the type of items that they'll need. For example, a baseball team or any sports team might need caps or jerseys versus tailoring to a restaurant business owner who might I need aprons and polo shirts for their staff. All of this will help you determine what kind of items you're looking to embroider and therefore help you determine the right machine to fit those needs. I've also done a video on this channel that talks more in depth about how to start your embroidery business and some of the key factors to keep in mind. So if you're interested to check that out, make sure to click the card above or the links below. The last piece of advice that I will give you in starting your own embroidery business is to make sure you dedicate enough time to learn the craft and hone your skills. You should know going into this that embroidery is not going to be plug and play but it's not rocket science either. It will take a certain amount of effort and learning curve to be able to master the craft and do quality work. This is just like any other skill that you're looking to acquire, so you should have the right expectation going into this business. From my experience, I've seen most people take about three months on average to be fully comfortable with their machines after training and ongoing tutorials. Now this learning curve could vary from person to person because of different backgrounds and experiences and how fast you learn. This is precisely why we offer free training with the purchase of an embroidery machine package here at Ricoma. Not only can you schedule a free online training with an instructor, you also get lifetime seven days and after hour support from our service team. You can also get retrained as many times as you want if you forget something or just need a quick refresher. And if you purchase a multi-head machine, we actually send a technician on site to your location to train you and your staff. So if you're interested to check out any of our machine packages and what they include, make sure to click the card above or down in the links below and speak with a product specialist. All right, question number two from one of our followers says, how can I get better at embroidery without being scared to mess up my machine? Now, part of this was answered in the, the last question in that with the proper training and ongoing support, you're going to master the craft and learn your machine and therefore not break it. But besides that, I fully understand the fear that you might have of messing up your embroidery machine because you're using it improperly. While embroidery machines might be complex, they're also very sturdy. So with the proper care and maintenance, they can withstand a lot. The best advice that I would give you to overcome that fear is to really just dive right in and not be afraid to fail. Because let's face it, we all know that in the embroidery journey or in any entrepreneurial journey, it's going to face a lot of failures. In fact, if you speak with a lot of professional embroiderers that have been through those phases, you'll see that many times they'll have a pile of messed up garments that they had to go through to get to that point. If you mess up on a particular item while embroidering it, which by the way is bound to happen at some point, you can use that item as a scrap 
scrap pieces to practice on or even run samples for your customer. Finally, one thing you wanna make sure you do on a regular basis is to maintain your machine properly so that you maximize the longevity of your investment. Make sure you dust off any excess threads or lint that might be gathering up underneath the needle plate and grease and oil certain parts to make sure they're lubricated properly and not create issues down the road. We have a ton of maintenance videos on your particular machine for Recoma customers in the Recoma customer portal. So make sure you get access to that so you can view those videos whenever you forget how to maintain your machine. Maintenance is something so simple yet so overlooked by a lot of people and it is a guaranteed way to mess up your machine if not done properly. All right, the third question from one of our followers says, what's the best machine from your company for sewing? So I know we have a lot of different sewing machine models on our online shop and the choices can get a little confusing and overwhelming. So let me break down for you some of the most popular models that we have and what they're used for. Our most popular sewing machine models are probably the KS810 and the KS820. The KS810 has a seven inch raised column and roller foot that gives it high clearance, making it more suitable for sewing bulkier items like shoes, bags, hats, and more. The KS820 has these features as well, but also features two needles that allow you to create two rows of parallel stitching at once. If you're interested in a more versatile machine that can sew tubular items like cuffs, bags, and hats, you may opt for a machine like the Iconics KS335A, which has a cylindrical arm. The KS335A also has a walking foot, which moves in unison with the feed dogs to grip fabric and pull it evenly through the machine. This makes it great for sewing thick materials or multiple layers without distortion or puckering. On top of that, the KS335A and the KSA10 can both be used to sew patches onto caps. This is a popular method for embroiderers that want to combine embroidered patches with sewing them on to caps or hats. In fact, we've done a detailed tutorial on this topic sewing a leather patch onto a cap. So if you're interested to learn how to do that using the KS335A, make sure to check it out in the card above and in the links below. Finally, if you're simply looking for a flatbed sewing machine that can sew together light to medium garments like cloth, denim, and knitted materials, you might go for the Iconics KS870. I would also encourage you to check out a blog post we've made on the different types of industrial sewing machines and what they're used for, which is in the card above and down in the links below. All right, that's all the time that we have for today. If I didn't get to your question, make sure to follow us on Instagram and submit your question the next time we ask on Instagram stories. Also check us out on Facebook for some helpful tips and on TikTok for some entertaining content. All of those handles are down below here. And last but not least, if you haven't done so already, make sure to join our free Facebook group, Embroidery and Custom Apparel Mastery, where there's now over 30,000 apparel decorators in there sharing their tips and tricks of the industry, and you can be a part of the conversation. All right, you guys, I hope you found that information helpful. Make sure to implement those tips in your business. Thank you guys so much for your continued support, and see you guys back here on the next video.